By the end of this video, you will know what projection mapping edge blending is, why we use it, and how to do it yourself using QLab. In previous videos, we looked at how to projection map on many different surfaces that really range from geometric all the way up to three-dimensional. However, since all these examples were small, we were able to get away with using only one projector. In the real world, we are going to need to deal with situations where we want to cover a large area with projections. Let's say that we have a set that has two flats on either side of the stage. One we could, way we could approach this is by using two separate projectors, one for each individual flat. This would be simple to do since the flat fits within the output of the projector beam, and we have covered in previous videos how to geometric projection mapping works. But what if we had a large wall in the background that we wanted to projection map onto? One way we could do this is grab ourselves a super bright projector, choose a correct lens that would cover the entire wall, and call it a day. And while we could do this, large projectors are expensive and bulky. The most obvious solution would be to use more than one projector. Using multiple projectors has lots of benefits. We can cover extremely large surfaces, have a brighter image, and have a much better pixel density. But how exactly would we approach this? One method would be to use a technique called image budding, which is when we take images of the projector and try to align them perfectly along the edge that they meet. However, this technique is extremely annoying and can oftentimes be impossible. This is because every projector has different attributes that can cause one to differ from another. For example, one could heat up differently and warp the image slightly. This would cause a very noticeable gap in the image, if everything is not exactly perfect. The solution is to overlap the two outputs of the projector in the middle. This would allow for a buffer zone of sorts to be created where we don't really need to be super careful when setting up the physical projectors. But this would cause us another headache. Whenever we shine two light sources on top of one another, they get brighter. And the exact same principle applies to projectors as well. Whatever portion of our images are overlapped will be twice as bright as the areas that are not overlapped. To solve this issue in our projection mapping software, we can cut off part of the image on both sides to make the images not overlap. However, this brings us back to our original problem of things not lining up exactly and being noticed. We need to find a way to seamlessly merge the two images together. Thankfully, there is a technique called edge blending that does just this. We can take the output of one projector and define the region that will be overlapped. We then can create a gradient that will fade out the image so we don't have a harsh edge. Next, on the other projector's image, we will do the same exact thing with the reversed gradient. When we put it all together, the images will be seamless and will be more tolerant to changes. Since edge blending is a common thing to do, your projection mapping software will most likely have it built in. Today, I am going to show you how to do it using QLab. If you need a refresher on how to projection map with QLab, check out this video here. The only thing that we need to begin projection mapping with edge blending is two projectors. I have already set up two of my projectors and pointed them at a simple white rectangle with the overlap area somewhere that will show up, just for demonstration purposes. Let's now hop on over to QLab and dive into the software side. Okay, time to get to the fun part, actually projection mapping. So what I've done so far is I've set up my two projectors, I pointed them at the surface and made sure that there's an overlap region in the center. I went ahead and I fired up QLab, and I just dragged in a video cue. So now let's hop on to the map mapping process. In the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to click on the little cog icon to bring up QLab settings. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to go to the video tab. And I'm going to select the uh, first surface here and click edit. I've already changed the dimensions to the proper dimensions. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, go ahead and check out the video on our channel about calculating surface resolution. And the very first thing we need to do is assign our first projector. And we can do that by going to the left hand side down here, clicking on the plus button and selecting our first projector. Then I'm going to select it, and then just for now where it says edge blending, I'm going to deselect it. But don't worry, we'll re-enable that later. And I'm gonna click on grid to bring up our mapping grid. And then I'm just going to grab in the center of here, and I'm going to move this 
just to get a little closer to where it needs to be. And that's looking good right about there. And now we're going to start pinning the corners. So I'm going to take the upper left hand corner and we're going to pin that to the upper left hand corner. Same thing with the bottom left hand corner right there. And then what we're going to do for the middle is we're just going to try to get it close to where it should be so that the image looks normal, or at least, of course, half of the image looks normal. So I'm going to do that and place that right there. And OK, I'm going to call that good for now. And now it's time to add our second projector in. So to do that, I'm going to hit the plus button and click on the second projector. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select that projector, enable the grid, and do the same thing. Oh, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable edge blending here, just so we can see um, both of the full images, and this will make it easier to match it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it over to roughly where it's supposed to be. Then we're going to grab the right hand corner, and we're going to pin both of those to the edges. We're sort of working our way outwards in. And once we do that, now it's time to head to the center. And this is where QLab's um, grid is really going to help, because as you can see, when we're warping it, they're overlapping each other. So what we want to do is make them overlap perfectly. So essentially, you just need to play around with these handles until you see everything line up together. And it can take some practice to get it just right. I should say practice and patience. Because if you're like me, you don't want to have anything off. I usually use the vertical lines first, and then I go up and down with the horizontal lines. OK, that's close enough. And now you'll see exactly what um, we discussed earlier, is when you have two beams that overlap, you uh, will see that it's brighter. So this is where edge blending comes in. We're going to go ahead in the bottom left hand corner and we're going to enable that once again. Make sure it's enabled on both projectors. And now we're going to play around with what's called blend gamma. And this is sort of the gradient, how much of the gradient that we want. So I'm going to select uh, one of the projectors and up on blend gamma, I'm going to click and drag up and down. And as you see, if I bring the gamma all the way down, Oops, it basically is darkness in between. And if I bring it all the way up, we don't have that blend anymore. So what we essentially want to do is we want to uh, play around with this number and drag it up and down until we get an image that looks good. And for some reason, one of my projectors, the right hand projector is a lot dimmer than the left hand one. Uh, one's newer, one's older. Um, I needed to play around with the brightness to match it. Uh, but normally, if you had projectors that were uh, equal, uh, you wouldn't see this. And it's really exasperated in the video. I'm looking at the video feed that you guys are seeing, and it's it looks very dark and not even. But at least to me, it seems a lot more even. The cameras are really good at picking up small differences. There you go. You've successfully edge blended two projectors together. If you found this video useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to support the channel. And I will see you next time.